in the industrial part community where you might be able to uh, It's also a start for us. That's not the be all and end all of what we're doing and where we're trying to go. That's just the beginning. So if at any time HPD says that, you know, they want us to leave, we're, we're not basing everything we do on aquaponics on this one place. And, you know, our conversation with Green Thumb pretty much told us that much. Like, this is this is a trial thing. Um, we couldn't get the, the lot passed on to the Parks Department anyway, which would have given us a little bit more time. So what we want to do is do what we can in the amount of time that we have and make a difference in the community for now. I mean, right now the land is sitting there. And it's, it's, it's causing a lot of, I mean, I don't know if you stood around there lately, but you know, exactly. So having a garden there for like six months, a year, two years, mm -hmm. I think is a lot better than what it looks like right now. Well, well if you garden do, versus a aqua farm, which is different. Well, we're growing mostly food mm -hmm. and flowers. That's what we're gonna be growing. The fish is just nutrient generator for the plants, just like you would use warm wasting to grow food or cow dung to grow food, is the same thing. We're growing mostly food, as much food as you can in a space like that. The fish is just fertilizer for the plants. That's my only concern. I mean, I have introduced them to Pfizer, mm -hmm. just down the road. It might be possible to, if this project succeeds, oh, yeah. to do a large scale yeah. fish farm at Pfizer and Acumen is interested yes. in talking mm -hmm. to, to them about that, that down sense. the road. But again, we have to start somewhere. And it might I think it might get a lot of buzz, which I think would be a good thing for the market. Um, that's, that's what I was thinking, too. I think it really supports, and we've, we've worked so hard as a community. We worked, and especially thanks a lot of thanks to Jerry, to keep the market from being closed yeah. a few years ago, to not yeah. um, sort of embrace a group that wants to, uh, you know, promote the notion of its presence and what it can provide to the community besides just a couple stalls for people. You know, really, it's sort of a vision. I see it as a vision for the future of the market. And I see Rob scribbling down notes like rooftop farm and things like that. Yeah, I, mean, I think right, that's it a could, it, This could be a, a, a jumping off point for some really exciting things happening there in the future. Um, that's, you know, I want to make Moore Street is extremely different than many streets in Williamsburg now. Moore Street still has that Latino, Puerto Rican cultural vibe, right? And I'll be very clear. When you start talking aqua farms and farms like that, that really isn't that part of that culture. Mm -hmm. So then I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think a different demographic. Mm -hmm. I think a different class. Let me finish. Yeah, okay. Let me finish, right? So we didn't save the market to be a hipster spot. Save the market for the low, moderate income families of Bushwick Highlands and the projects around the affordable housing. That's, that's, what the, that's why media dumped money in there. That's what Diana dumped money in there. Pretty much they, they dumped money. <coughs> they invested money. Yes, that's what they, they, they invested money not 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 to create a new clientele. All right, I, I, I'd like to defend well, myself on that position. And I'm not trying to be... Well, well, but well, I, I do let, feel let a bit me, defensive me, about that assertion. And, and let, me, let me finish my point so you don't have to be defensive. Okay. The, the point is, if the point is, you mentioned before, you want to attract a new clientele. What's a new clientele? You want to attract? The neighborhood is the neighborhood since 2000 has changed dramatically demographically. The white population has gone up 600%. Sure. The Asian population has gone up 400%. You have thousands of African Americans who live across the street from the market who don't feel welcome in the market. Sure. They haven't since the 1950s when they used to call it the red market. And the Puerto Rican population has declined dramatically, not only in Williamsburg, but in New York City overall. I have maintained the leases on all the existing tenants as long as they pay their rent. I am not looking to get rid of anyone. I've built out new spaces. I have been trying to be really sensitive to people in the community, or else I would have rented them out to all hipsters at this point, which I have not done. Yeah, well, that would be a good point. Okay. Well. And, and i got to say, since I've been involved from, from day one, when nobody else was there, uh, trying to keep the place open, no one. And A1 priority was to keep the existing tenants as long as they wanted to stay, they would stay, irregardless of how much money they could pay. And you kept your promise with that, and I appreciate that. Uh, but there 
has to be a certain influx of new, whether whether you want to call them hipster or whatever, whatever. There has to be okay, because well, these well, no, 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 just I'm one second, one second more. Because, because, because these that's, people that's are where able. I find it sort of offensive that new technology equals hipster. No, new technology equals the future. And it's the same reason you, you we. The reason there aren't, that we need supermarkets, we need farmers markets, we need homegrown, we need urban farms for the I... city to, to be sustainable and can in the I future. Insert that? This wait isn't wait about wait. race or class or anything like that. This say, is about sustainability. Let me not even phrase it that way. Forward. Let me just say new tenants, okay? New tenants were coming in at an upper, upgraded rent, and their rents, correct me if I'm wrong, was now supporting and subsidizing those tenants that have been there forever. No one's paying more than 400 dollars a month keep. even now. Yeah, I know, I know. But, but you okay. can't, but Jerry, I, I'm like, I agree, I'm agreeing with you and arguing with you at the same time because by saying, well, it's us, you know, that's this us against no, them no, mentality. Never, never. Or it's high rents against low rents. I mean, the, you know, the future of sustainability is, you know, sort of equality right. and self, you know, self-sustaining communities. So if you have to say like it's this, it's you know like the affordable housing on the waterfront kind of crap where we had to you know we have to swallow all this these towers so that there can be market rate to subsidize the affordable house you know it's like it's just not compatible right it needs to be something where it's not about one that you know you have this divisive kind of attitude and. One of the huge urban dilemmas of this country right now is fresh food. You know, we're not, you know, farming is declining and everything's being shipped from California and we're about to have, you know, like a fuel crisis. And, you know, it's like, come on, this isn't. But Heather, that's not what I'm saying. If this it was, is what you're if, saying. No, what I'm saying, this was a collaboration with El Puente. El Puente was here, who's been here for 30 years, and they said, oh, we went with El Puente the parks. Gardens, but Joan says she wants to bring she wants to bring in artists, she wants to do all sorts of different programming. But El Puente didn't come to us and say we want to put a card in there. I would have I would have reached out to El Puente. This is you know, we have a difference in opinion on that. I would say that much. We have a difference. I, I would wish I wish the world is the way you think it is. The world is not the way. I don't think it's the same. I think I think what I'm hearing today is that you want new tenants. You want no, no, no. no. So that's what they want to utilize an empty lot to showcase a new technology that sure. will help and it create a sustainable Sorry, and I just want to just insert this because we keep saying it's a new technology, but it's a technology that's actually a thousand years old. It's the technology that the Incas use. It's the technology that the Chinese use for growing rice and swamps. It's the technology that Egyptians use. So it's not something new. It's something that's been around for a while. A bunch of people gave it a fancy name. <laughs> yes, but it's nothing new at all. And to show people that you can grow your own tilapia and eat it, I don't think it's a, you know, it's, so it's, it's eye-opening. And it's, how is that? I don't know. I haven't seen the There's a guy on yet. Waterbury Street that's yeah. been growing bean sprouts right. with this technology forever. There was an oriental company across the street from us, right here, that was doing the, the fish farming in the tanks. I know they've been doing, I think, typically they would grow what bass in the tanks and then the tilapia will put in to clean out the tanks and whatnot. So. You know, Gotham Greens did a hydroponics on the roof of, of the GMBC building on Humboldt Street. That place now employs 20 people and they're all neighborhood people. They do six yields a year selling to supermarkets and restaurants. I also, I mean, I think the, uh, the reality of that corner is in the space of this year we've had a murder and three shootings. Okay, in in a one block radius of that corner. I'm from here. I know that that street needs yeah. liveliness. It's the old Jane Jacobs thing, right? We have to activate that street to to drive away people that are driving away legitimate people. It's a transit street from Bushwick. People come down Bushwick Avenue, down Moore Street to the supermarket. The liquor stores a problem. You could you could voucher it. You managed the place yes, for years. Yes, managed it for years, and we cleaned up that corner, and then it was just oh my god, it was a headache yep. every day, yep. day in and day out. Had a life threatened every day, but we cleaned it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I love the idea. If we want to give it a shot for two years, see what happens. You know, black without a business plan, let's give it a shot. And if HPD comes down with something, they leave. 
That's Absolutely. right. That's, 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 that's the understanding. I mean, there's affordable no housing funding established for this. I mean, if this is any other project, you can have no funding established, you should have done have the funding for that. Dude, but they're doing it on the, on the back now. They're focusing on economic development, and they're going to raise money to do it. Give them a shot. But they don't. There's, there's no... It's for two years. So if it doesn't work, then it stays an empty lot. Like, there's... It can't... It can't make it worse. There's nothing else that's going to go in there right now. There's no other proposal on the table. So it's either an empty lot for the next two years, or it's a farm maybe for two years, or it's a farm for six months and then an empty lot for another year and a half. You know, it's not... I would assume it's even more than that it stays an empty, uh, an empty lot if it's not, if there's nothing nothing happening there. It's an uh, empty lot is a, a nice word. Or what's in that empty lot? I mean, uh, the way I understand... A lot of that, garbage. A lot of garbage. That's not healthy for the community. It's an eyesore, as well as a health issue. So I don't see the downside, no, on, on, on having that. I mean, just, you know, as you say, uh, give it a shot. And, and, and if HPD does not have anything in the pipe on housing, yeah. And I think if the community board is unhappy with the project, then you have every right to go to HPD and say, pull this lease or pull this permit or pull this license, whatever it will be, because, because Jerry is correct. I mean, even if it says two years, it could be six months, it could be anything the city wants it to be. It's a revocable license with a 72-hour evict notice on it. But it's, yeah, I mean, we, oh, that's true, but we also should understand that, you know, the, uh, if, you, if you get a lease for two years, so the likelihood of revoking that, you know, so it's, it's not so simple. It is not so simple, so we say we don't like it. But on the other hand, where we have something now, or in the pike here, on the line here, something better than that. And if this, this can teach children and, uh, you know, and get, uh, make them get aware of that, I, mean, mm -hmm. I don't see a, see a downside. Yes. <laughs> I make a motion to approve this project under the stipulation that we give the shot for two years, and if at any point you know the community feels that you know it's that site should 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 be better used for something that has a greater community benefit, then we put forward and right. submit it to the uh, uh, authorizing agency. All right, that's great, except that we don't actually need to approve or disapprove the project. We need to support approve it. or disapprove any of our support. Okay, friendly connection. <laughs> friendly connection of up to two years. Because that, that finishes the, the, the okay, letter. So the, so the letter will say we, we support the project. Um, stipulations up to two years. And we have the right to revoke our support if it's a problem. Is that what you said? I'll, I'll word that more. <laughs> <laughs> and we understand that HPD also has the right to revoke should a project come along. Or should, a, should, a, should funding for disposition of the property uh, become available. Say you know just to, that it, you know the biggest need is housing, but we understand there's no program. You know what I mean? Right. So that's Maybe right. that's you know that. Uh, all those in favor? Against? Abstentions? Motion. Yeah,